I'm a mid-twenties female, and I went to the local grocery store tonight around 5 p.m. It's now winter, and it's getting really dark by about 5 p.m. where I live. I was in an aisle taking my time deciding between the options, when this late twenties and early thirties looking guy with light features glasses and a scuffy beard comes up right next to me, and he just stands there. I didn't think much of it or even look at him at first because I figured whatever, he's just looking too. But then after a few seconds, I noticed that he wasn't moving or really doing anything, just standing there. So I looked at him and he was already staring right at me. For a second, I thought he might say something to me. So I stood there for a second just looking back at him. He didn't say anything. So I just turned and fast walked away. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, that was weird, but whatever. Probably just an awkward guy who doesn't know how to talk to women. Then, not 30 seconds later, I'm in another aisle and I see him out of the corner of my eye coming down the aisle I'm in, again staring right at me. So again, I walked away as fast as I could and just went right to the self-checkout. While I was at self-checkout, I'm looking over my shoulders the whole time, making sure that he isn't behind me anymore, and he's not. I start walking out of the store, relieved that once again I was just being paranoid and that I wasn't ever in any real danger. As I'm walking out, I decide to look behind me one more time, and there he is, right fucking behind me. I notice that he has nothing in his hands, no groceries, and he's heading right towards the door right on my heels. Without even thinking, I just stop dead in my tracks. I look at him again, and he's looking at me. Then he puts his head down looking at his phone and walks past me out the door. He bought nothing. I'm so scared at this point, my head is spinning. I didn't know what to do. I can see my car because I park close to the exit, thank goodness. So I call my fiance and sprint to my car as fast as I can. I jump in, lock the doors, and start looking around for this guy. Then I see him. He's aimlessly walking around the parking lot through the cars. He's pretty far away from me at this point, and I have my fiance on the phone, so I'm feeling somewhat safe again. I watched him walk around for another few seconds before I got the hell out of there. I have no idea what this guy was doing or what even his motive could have been. Maybe he was just a weird dude who doesn't know how to talk to girls. Or maybe he was a predator with dangerous intentions. Or maybe he thought I looked like really easy prey for a robbery. The thing I really can't wrap my head around is the fact that each time I noticed him, he was already staring at me. He wasn't discreet at all, and I would think a dangerous predator might be a little more inconspicuous. He also didn't buy anything from the grocery store, which I also just can't understand. I was in the store five minutes before I noticed him, so I'm sure he didn't follow me in the store. Am I being paranoid? There's a lot that didn't feel right, so I'm having a really hard time trying to rationalize this experience. In any case, definitely a creepy encounter for sure. I'm a teenage female, and I work at a small independent grocery store in my town. Most of the people that come in are fine besides a few creepy old men. There was this one guy who I'll call B that would come in that was supposedly a pedo. It is unknown whether or not this is true, but this was confirmed to me when he would come in multiple times every Sunday, when it's just myself, my female friend, and three boys, two of them which are underage. One was 14 and the other was 17. Bian took a liking to the 14-year-old boy. He would start out by just talking to him for long periods of time, to the point where I would have to walk over and make sure nothing happens. One day, B walked in as usual and was talking to the boy and was being extra creepy. I don't remember exactly what happened, but once we left, we were laughing at him because of just how creepy he was. I should also mention that we tried to ban him from the store, but the owner didn't want to do that because he hasn't done anything wrong. He ended up coming back an hour later with a $2 bill that had his name, phone number, and it said no women and no girls, and said guys only on the front. 
He told one of my coworkers to give it to the boy or something like that. He obviously didn't give it to him and he showed it to all of us. Once B was done with the shopping, he was at the 14 year old's register yet again and we were all just staring at him. He asked what we were staring at and my female friend went off on him telling him that he gave a 14 year old his phone number and how that's really damn creepy and she called him a pedo. He then actually started screaming at her that, you know, females have no rights, and then stormed out. My friend that had confronted him called her dad, who was a cop, and had asked him what to do. He then informed the dispatcher because our manager didn't want to call the police. We were all terrified of him because B has a prior conviction of stabbing someone, so I was honestly scared that he was going to come back and stab all of us. One of our managers that actually cares about us finally decided to permanently ban him from the store. He lives in my town, so I do still see him every once in a while. So a few weeks ago, my other friend's brother had sent a video of him and his friends messing with B, and as well as him being a pedo, he's also insanely racist. There was actually a video of him of saying that Black CP was child pornography, but instead of saying child pornography, he said the N-word with a hard R, that it was that kind of porn. So yeah, if B ever tries to do something like that again, it's on sight. When I was 17, I used to work at a popular Indiana grocery store called Strack and Van Til. When I applied, I actually requested for them to give me the evening and afternoon shifts, which means I would get off pretty late. This particular shift, I remember getting off at 10 p.m., and since my job was so close to home, I would usually just walk the 15 minutes to my house. Mistake number one. Mistake number two was that I would always blast my music on my headphones. I remember specifically listening to Tyler the Creator's Wilshire, as he had recently came out with his most recent album, and I loved that song. As I'm walking past a dark street, I was then pulled into it by my neck, and then a gun was held up to my stomach, and I was ordered to get on the ground and don't say anything, as the assailants then start searching my pockets. Before I went to the ground, I noticed there was another assailant standing a little ways down the street being lookout. My jewelry Apple Watch and wallet was all stolen. Ironically enough, I had cash in my wallet because I had planned on getting piercings with my friends the following day and the assailant actually mocked me for only having 60 bucks in my wallet, even though he was the one robbing me. After they were done, they told me to just stay on the ground until I heard them leave. I did just that. Once I got up, a literal fucking police car drove past me with his window down, totally oblivious to what just happened. So I then yelled at him, and he pulled into the street I was in and asked me what was up. I told him how I was just robbed at gunpoint just a few minutes ago, then explained the whole situation. The idiot actually asked me if I was sure that it was a gun, and once I confirmed, I got in the back seat and he drove me the remaining literal two blocks it took for me to get home. I arrived home and they asked me if I wanted to scan my phone for prints at the station, and I agreed. Once the scan came back negative for any prints other than mine, they took my statement, opened a case, and it was quickly closed. I don't think they really cared too much, if I'm being honest. Fortunately, one of the scariest moments of my life taught me to be more vigilant and much more aware of my surroundings. Thank you all for listening to my story, and stay safe out there. It was dinner time when my stomach grumbled, and I realized I hadn't eaten all day. I went through the fridge avoiding moldy foods and outdated milk. I generally check the expiry dates once a week, but my family and I had just gotten back from a vacation. Unfortunately, whatever was in there had either expired or been molded by the time we had returned. I ordered pizza for my children, but I avoided eating it myself since we had been eating pizza for most of our vacation. But you know how children love their pizza. Anyway, I gave the teenager the don't open the door for anyone and don't go outside until I'm back, speech, and then headed to my local grocery store. 
A five minute drive to the supermarket meant that I could be out there and back just in time for my toddler to wake up from his nap. The parking lot was mostly deserted when I arrived, except for a lady who was standing in it. Everyone in their right mind was sitting indoors beneath the air conditioning, escaping that brutal heat of the scorching Louisiana summer. I stepped inside of the store, thanking God for the sudden breeze that slapped me in the face when the door slid open. I grabbed a basket since I knew that going to the supermarket to buy one thing would result in me leaving with a full basket. As usual, the registers were empty. A few cashiers huddled around one register, smiling and giggling while glancing at their phones. I explored the supermarket aisles a few times before choosing to make a seafood fettuccine. I spotted two men staring at me as I had bent down to pick up a box of fettuccine noodles that had slipped from my fingers. I can't provide any details since I didn't have my glasses on, and they were quite blurry at the time. I moved to the next aisle while singing and giddy with anticipation for my meal. I reached for the Alfredo sauce, but at five foot one, I couldn't reach the top shelf. Just as I had turned around, hoping to find a worker to ask for assistance, I collided with one of the men. You may be wondering how I can be so sure that it was them. Well, they had a strong odor of sweat and musk, which made them difficult to miss. My nose had already picked up on the scent from a previous aisle. The man was so close, I could feel his hot, stinking breath on my forehead. Hey, I can help you with that. He spoke with a Spanish accent. I dove under the arm he'd lifted to fetch the Alfredo sauce, and I detected a strong odor of onion and a general lack of cleanliness emanating from under his armpits. I flashed a nice southern smile, as my mama had always taught me, despite my disdain and annoyance. I was really annoyed that I just couldn't go into a grocery store and pick up dinner without having the feeling of being stalked or followed. I've been in similar situations before, so I was familiar with their kind. My eyes adjusted to the new distance, and I was finally able to make out his features. He was Hispanic, and he looked to be in his mid-thirties. He had a decent enough face, but the scar on his right cheek raised doubts about his age. I don't know what happened to him, but on my head, he got that scar from some woman he'd attacked at a grocery store. However, I may be mistaken. He wore a dirty shirt and worn out jeans. When he handed me the sauce, his fingers softly brushed my palm, and the experience made me feel repelled by the contact. The man just looked at me with a darn creepy stare. One that said, for example, I want to eat you for dinner, or I can't live without you, among others. I thanked him and walked away. While admiring the new dove collection down a different aisle, I saw their eyes dart toward me as I moved down the aisle. As soon as they noticed me, one of the guys snatched up the nearest item, which just so happened to be a pack of tampons. They stared at me with expressionless faces, their eyes scanning every inch of my body as they observed me. To be clear, I was dressed in a long flowy maxi dress that revealed no part of my figure. I quickly turned around, feeling as if they'd undressed me with their eyes. I looked back over my shoulders as I turned the corner. I caught sight of the empty cart the second man had been pushing. We had been in the store for about 15 minutes at that point and he had nothing other than the tampons that the scarred-faced man had tossed in. These two males scared the very daylights out of me, and that's saying something since I'm not easily frightened. And as I've said, it wasn't my first encounter with these kinds of individuals. I was aware of what they were capable of if they became desperate enough. It was time for me to go. When I got to the cash register and paid for my purchases, I realized I'd either lost track of the men or they'd finally given up and chosen to just go on with their lives. As I exited the supermarket, I noticed a Hispanic-looking woman roaming around the parking lot. I paid it no mind, but you know, we all have spidey senses, and mine was on high alert. This was, of course, the same woman I'd seen before. I brushed it off, thinking she was selling something, and started towards my trailblazer. The moment she caught sight of me, the woman makes a beeline straight towards me. I threw her a sidelong glare because I was like, Sis, don't come running up on me. 
I'm not a violent person, but from where I'm from, you don't run up on somebody unless you're looking for a fight. I can't find my car, she replied as I unlocked my door. Could you please help me find my car? By now, I've had enough of this heat. Even the thought of placing my groceries in the trunk and then saving them when I got home didn't sit well with me. When I saw that she was holding a keyless remote for her car, I then became really irritated. I took a deep breath. What would Jesus do? The woman did look lost as she browsed the lot. I turned my head to the side to peek over my shoulder and make sure the two men from the store weren't attempting to ambush me from behind. Press the button. I said as calmly as possible. It was hot as Satan's breath outside, and sweat was beginning to drip right down my back. She didn't understand me, so I grabbed for her remote, and with her permission, hit the button. I didn't get an alarm when I clicked the button, nor did I get a horn when I pressed that one. The look on her face now had me on edge. I urged her to go inside the store and talk to someone who could be of help, since I was unable to assist her and that we couldn't understand each other. I speak a little Spanish, but I'm not fluent. I popped my trunk and turned around to begin loading the goods when I saw two males coming my way out of the corner of my eye. Worn out denim and dirty sweatshirts, they reminded me of those men from the store. I very tightly grasped the basket's handle and bit my bottom lip as I then peered into that woman's dishonest eyes. Considering recent news reports concerning human trafficking and other such crimes, I immediately conceived of this as a scenario. She stepped closer when she saw I was paying attention to the men and said how her husband and kid were hunting for their car as well. I'm standing there just staring at these dudes. There's no way this was a father and son duo. They looked about the same age with a little extra weight around their waists. I didn't have on my glasses and I didn't need them to see that this woman was lying. The men got closer, and I realized that I was now trapped between the men and the woman. I grabbed the shopping bag with my Alfredo sauce in it, and I was prepared to bash someone's child over the head. I had no idea what their intentions were, but one thing was for certain. I wasn't going down without putting up a fight. I didn't know karate, but I knew crazy and they would learn just how crazy I could be if one of them touched me inappropriately, or hell even moved in a manner that I found offensive. Believe it or not, all I could think about was how these people were going to force me to bust them over the head with Malfredo sauce, and then I'd have to go inside and purchase another jar. And with the way these grocery prices have gone up, that really made me mad. I had a firm grip on the back, and I was just about to swing, when one of the cart attendees began walking our way. This allowed me the opportunity to sprint to the driver's side of my vehicle and then hop inside. I locked the door just as one of the men yanked the passenger side door handle. Hey, what's going on here? The cart attendant asked. Despite his height and slender build, he had an air of authority about him. I don't know how much help that he really would have been if the men decided to attack though, but the two Hispanic men and the woman began to slowly back away. Then they all walked away together, as if magically finding their vehicle. The car attendant, or whatever they're called, told me that he saw the men watching me when I got out of my vehicle earlier. He assumed I was long gone, but as he moved across the parking lot collecting the baskets, he happened to see that they were surrounding me. He suggested that I park closer to the store's entrance, and not too far back. The thing is, I enjoyed parking further away from the entrance to get some exercise, but that was all the justification I needed to park closer. I didn't think it was smart to leave right away. They could have very well been waiting for me somewhere else around the corner. To that cart attendant, thank you for saving my life. To the two creepy men and sick woman, I really hope all of you are locked up behind bars. Y'all stay safe out there, and remember that not everyone was raised the same way your mama raised you. So be careful. Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed these stories. If you ever want to submit your own, you can do so at southerncannibal.com. Have a good night everyone. And remember, to always...